Hey, what can you do during your presentation that guarantees people be engaged, that they're listening, that they care, that they don't fall asleep? We're going to talk about that today. Just finished up a podcast at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. You can find it at Spotify, iTunes, iHeart. This is the channel, Maximize Your Influence, where we supersize things. But go to the website, check out the podcast, get your free Persuasion IQ assessment, and of course the free book, Maximum Influence. That's a new edition. Just pick up a little shipping and handling. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about a couple of things that make a huge difference. Two of them, gamification and edutainment. And those are pretty two new words, made up words. Gamification is not new. It's been around for a while. But let's see what the dictionary says about that. Merriam-Webster says, the process of adding games or game-like elements to something, such as a task, so as to encourage participation. So what are the advantages of this? A game, they're intrigued, they're interested. We all love to play games. We like to compete. A lot of us like to win. And Amazon's been adding this to their warehouses. It's kind of a tedious thing. You're pulling boxes, long hours, same things every day. Now they gamify it. You're fighting dragons. You're playing Tetris. You're competing against other warehouses. This is happening all over places. We have Uber's doing it, Lyft's doing it, Target, Delta. A lot of those tedious jobs like customer service, things like that, where you can earn points. One more phone call, one more a lift or pick up to take somebody somewhere that's the gamification so what can you do during your presentation to gamify it to make it more interesting and we're going to talk about that and entertainment but let's talk about the gamification process first now here are the advantages increases attention connects people increases energy creates a competitive environment encourages teamwork helps participation promotes retention did you see that there's very little downside to it unless it's dumb they're not engaged they don't believe you it keeps their attention, they're engaged, they're involved, there's competition. All those things are critical. Bottom line with persuasion and influence, if they're not listening, if they don't care, you cannot persuade them. So when you add gamification, they're listening more, they're more engaged, they want to win, the information's more important to them. That's the key, that's what you want to do. And you can do this in your presentations, and you could also do this in your marketing. In fact, take a look at these numbers. And these numbers come from Accelerol.com that 80% of learners would be more productive if their work was more game-like. 89% say that a point system would increase their engagement. So let's at work this during your presentations. Gamification, it's a real thing. I mean, look at the gaming industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. In fact, the gaming industry right now is 10 times bigger than Hollywood, the movies that they produce. That's how big games are. Especially as you get younger in the workforce, you need to add this gamification, whether it be a presentation, whether it be in a sales room, whether it be in marketing, it's an important thing to have. Now let's talk about some marketing examples, some things you could do to add in the world of marketing to gamify it, to make it more interesting. Basically, any type of contest, any type of customer interaction, whether you're getting points, uh, achieving different levels, logging in, loyalty programs, reward badges, games, competition between others are all things you can take a look at. Why am I loyal to the airline that I'm loyal to? I'm not going to name names. It's not the service. It's not the price. It's the frequent flyer miles. That's gamification. You're earning miles. You're earning points. Sometimes double, sometimes triple. So if there's a contest for points, that's gamification. Keeps people loyal. People fight over these sandwich cards. Buy 10, get one free. They've lost it. They're crazy. they got one left. They're going to get the free sandwich. They're going to get it. They've more than paid for a free sandwich, but they're going to get it. That's gamification. We see it all the time. Next one, presentation examples. Giving feedback, team exercises, group contests, rewards, polls, surveys, using clickers to answer questions, icebreakers, incentives, quizzes, any of those things you can do during your presentations to be more engaging, to be more involved. That kind of gamifies it a little bit. Let's see which side of the room can answer the question. Let's see, you know, you've seen it before, but it really works. You become more persuasive, more influential, probably because and because they're listening more. So let's talk about the edutainment factor to this. This one's a little bit different. Edutainment. What does that mean? It comes from the word entertain and educate. Edutainment. And it's a real thing. Even the college students that I teach, I ask them first day of class, how are you here to see if I'm any good? Half of them will raise their hand. They want to see, they don't want to be bored. Even the professional speaking world, when I give keynote addresses, people want to know, are you funny? Are you a comedian? Are you a magician? What can you do? Can you keep people engaged? That's important. It's not just data dumping information. They want to be engaged. They want to be entertained. They want to work through these things. And that's what you need to do. So that's part of gamification is the edutainment factor, adding the games, being entertaining, that whole package 
of just being there. So they're fun. It's fun to be there. You're fun to listen to. So how can you add a little more entertainment to your presentations? Let's talk about a few of them. The first one is humor. <laughs> when you add a little humor, assuming that it works and you practice your delivery because you, they're even going to laugh with you or feel sorry for you. There's only really no in between there. And it's relevant, not offensive. Of course, those things evolve. But humor, they like you more. They listen more. They're easier to persuade. I mean, there's so many great elements. I spent years looking at the correlation between persuasion and humor, and it's huge. So I'm going to recommend you keep a joke list on your phone of jokes at work. And here's the key thing. Maybe you don't feel like you're that funny. Well, then borrow it. You're okay to borrow it. Have someone else tell the joke. Show a comic strip. Show a funny YouTube video. Any of those things could work for you, but you need added to add elements of humor. Again, if they're not listening, your fault. If they fall asleep, your fault. They don't care, your fault. They walk out the door, your fault. You've got to own up to that. You've got to understand, you've got to add these elements. And you might feel, well, I don't need to. This is a serious topic. Even with that, you've got to be more engaging and more entertaining. I mean, some topics you might not be spouting off a lot of jokes, but there might be an interesting story, an intriguing a angle, a type of contest, a quiz they can take, a game they can play. It's all part of that. But with the edutainment factor, the entertainment factor, stories is huge. The other one is known as the Zagarnik effect. When you're adding elements of intrigue or suspense or unfinished business or where you're going from point to point so they have to write things down, that's important. I mean, if you have four points and you went from two to four, people are going to freak out. That's the Zagarnik effect. Intrigue and suspense is all part of that. Here's one huge hello, your ability to tell stories. Stories persuade without detection. They keep people engaged. They grab their attention. They trigger emotions. They're very, very persuasive. I can't think of a presentation you give to a group of people that does not include a story. Along with that, too, have a story list. Create a story list. You have hundreds of stories right now. Create a story list. Start telling stories. They are engaging. They're entertaining. They're fun. People listen. It's a big piece of what you want to do. So get those stories. Tell those stories. And final piece, become more charismatic. And you're like, well, aren't you born with that? No, no, and no. I spent years doing research on laws of charisma. Can you learn charisma? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, here's the good news. Right now, you absolutely have some, some of those characteristics of charismatic people. Now, there's others you could learn, you could master. We can walk you through. In fact, if you want more information on charisma, go to MaximizeYourInfluence.com. We can teach you how to be charismatic. You can learn how to be charismatic because when you're charismatic, People want to be around you. They want to be influenced by you. They want to be engaged by you. They want to do what you're asking them to do, and they're going to like doing it and tell their friends to do it. That's the power of charisma. It's a function of your presence, the way you walk in the room, the way you handle yourself, the way you give your presentation. Of course, your inner charisma. That's not something we have time to talk about now. And of course, you're able to power and motivate people. You can be more charismatic. That's the power to evolve the over 100 tools. Being charismatic is critical. People always ask, what's the most important persuasion tool? If there's over 100, it's charisma. It's easy. They want to be influenced by it. There's very little resistance because you're charismatic. That's the key. Gamification, edutainment, add these elements. Get no sugarcoating it here. If they're not listening, if they're not engaged, if they're bored, if they run away, if they fall asleep, <laughs> your fault. Own up to it. Add these elements and go out and persuade with Alex.